welcome back to a series called He Trains My Hands for War, where we're going through the book of Joshua verse by verse, because Joshua is by far the best example of what it means to, for a whole nation to be obedient to the things of God as they walk into warfare, directed by God, instructed by God, and driven by God, both successes and failures, but they just followed it and they followed it obediently, unlike the world has ever seen before or has ever seen since. And it's so incredibly important that as we go through this, that we see, well, what does this look like? Because in the end times in the warring of the saints, there will be a three and a half year war of tribulation between the antichrist and the world army versus 144,000 Israelites with a multitude of tribes, nations, and tongues of Gentiles who all stand up for the things of Jesus Christ and defend those things to the death for three and a half years. So what does that look like? How can you be successful for three and a half years against the Antichrist and the world army? Well, the only way is by being obedient to the things of God, the strange things of God. You know, God is always instructing us to do strange, peculiar things. Uh, so where we are is Jericho has just been destroyed. Um, and there's a very peculiar thing that takes place in the instructions leading up to Jericho and following Jericho. And this is really what I, even my lead in, like what I was talking about is there's this point where you have to be obedient to things of God or it'll bleed to your destruction. So uh, I'm going to kind of go back a little bit. We're going to pick it up in 618. And you, by all means, keep yourselves from the accursed things, lest you become a curse when you take of the accursed things and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of bronze and iron are consecrated to the Lord and shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted, when the priests blew the trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep and donkey with the edge of the sword. I'm gonna jump to 24. But they burned the city and all that was in it with fire. Only the silver and gold and vessels of bronze and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua spared Rahab the harlot, her father's household, and all that she had. So she dwells in Israel to this day, because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Then Joshua charged them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord who rises up and builds this city Jericho. He shall lay its foundations with the firstborn, and with his youngest he shall set up its gates. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame spread throughout all the country. But the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding the accursed things. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, and the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed things, so the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. All right. Now I'm going to pause there because we talked, we spent a lot of time talking about the events of Jericho. Um, I do want to make mention again that when they're talking about Rahab, she was of the lineage of Jesus Christ. Like it wasn't just that she was saved and she lived in Israel. You know, if you look at Matthew, she was of the lineage of Jesus Christ. She did a great thing and received a great reward in eternity. But that's not what this is about. We're going to go all the way back to 18, uh, 618. And you, by all means, keep yourselves from the accursed things, lest you become a curse when you take of the accursed things and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. All right. So clearly, Achan did that. And this is what we're going to talk about today, because ultimately what's going on here is this is the first city that's going to be destroyed by Israel. It is the very first one. It's going to be the one that sets off a chain of events that starts a war of overtaking a land and claiming it in the name of God. And it's a very important one. 
Um, it's the most famous one to us. All of us have ha heard of the Battle of Jericho and its walls falling down. There's songs about it when we were kids. But it's a very important one. And God said, this, this one, this first one, I'm going to be with you, but all of the silver and the gold and the vessels and anything of value goes into the house of the Lord. That's very significant because I don't see anybody, I don't see any nation on this planet successfully pulling that off. Um, definitely not America. I'd say 50% of the people that went into that city, if they were Americans, would have started stuffing their pockets, if not more. If not more. Now, this is very significant because this is a strange thing. This would not make sense to the average person. Like to the average person who is alive today, they see all, you know, we just took this city. I killed like 40 people myself. Why don't I get any of this gold? Why don't I get any of this silver? Why don't I get like, wait a second here. Like it would be an uproar and to sit there and just sit, go, yes, Lord, it is yours. Nobody touch it. And everybody says, okay, this is what we're going to do. But of course, there's at least one. <laughs> there's always at least one. And this one person cursed the entire nation. Now, I want to kind of bring you back to why this is important to us. Because in the end times, it'll be the Antichrist and the world army with all the money, all the resources, all the weapons, all the armies, all of everything in the world, including great detail into logistics and technologies and chemical warfare and nuclear warfare. And somehow 144,000 Israelites with a multitude of tribes and tongues of nations of people who come together together and war against the Antichrist very, very, very successfully for three and a half years. But the Bible tells us in Revelation that it is God that sustains us for three and a half years. Well, how do you do that? Like, how do you do that? You would need the miracles of Almighty God. The Bible speaks of the earth literally eating armies that try to attack us because there's a place for us in the wilderness. Well, it's really for the 144,000 Jews, but it's again, a multitude of try like it's all one army. So it's important that, well, how would that work? <laughs> like, how could you possibly be successful? Only almighty God. And for an entire nation, we're talking well over a million people at this point. Not only one of them, only one of them broke this very critical rule to God. He said, because what is it? It's essentially saying, all right, we give you everything. Not just some things, we give it all to you. God was testing that nation to see, are you going to give it all to me? Like, you just going to lay it down and give it all to me? And I just don't think any of us really do that. And that's what it's going to require. It's going to require that you're willing to give everything. You know, even Abraham, like <clears throat> this nation of people is a nation of people because their forefather Abraham in the very beginning of that nation was willing to, to give his son, to give his, and, and that that's why the nation of Israel was so important to God because Abraham was tested. Will you give me everything? Now sacrifice your only child, your only son. And Abraham was willing to do it. And an angel stopped him. And then that bred the nation of Israel who were the chosen people who would then be got 
the son of capital M man, the son of man, the son of God. They begot Abraham, begot Jesus, the son of God through his lineage. That was that covenant. And that's why, because Abraham was willing to give his son, God's willing to give his son. Will you give it all? And here he's saying, you know what? This is what it's about. I, now I'm not saying me, but this is what God is saying is that I gave my all. I gave you my life. Will you give them it all? And it's gold and silver, ladies and gentlemen. And it's just so darn precious to us. And, and we have to be able to say, you get it all. All of it, God. You get it all. Not some. All of it. You get all of it. And as we see, it's going to curse the whole nation. One guy, one single guy, one single guy. That is why it is so incredibly important to really understand what it is God is asking you to do in these moments, in the moments where you are in a war, with a bunch of other people who are all standing up for Jesus Christ in the face of the Antichrist for three and a half years. And not one of you can mess this up. That's the messed up part. <laughs> not one of us can mess this up. We, we all have to get this. This is the piece that I've said through every episode leading up to this one is that they are a unique generation of nation because nobody has been able to pull this off ever before. The fact that it was just one, really, they should have been rewarded, in my opinion. I mean, that's like, you know, you're talking millions of people, one, so you got your bat 99.9999999999%. That's pretty good, but no, God says you're accursed. So how, you know, now leading, because if you let the one go, this is the first one. So now everyone after that, there's this choice that every person has to make. This doesn't just affect me. I took some gold and silver. The whole nation is a curse. And as you're going to see here leading up to a lot of people are going to lose their life, including him and including his entire family. But a lot of people are going to lose their lives in battle as well because until they figure this out. Um, how do you do that with millions of people? I don't know. Um, definitely can't do it with millions of Americans. I'm pretty sure of that. Or really millions of any modern humans today on the world. So just ponder that thought. You know, you willing to give it all? Like even the gold and the silver piece.